coming right there. All right, guys, this week on Tactical Rifleman, we are going to talk about medical gear for emergencies and everything. But before I get deep into this stuff, I want to give a big shout out to this week's sponsor. You know the deal. They, uh, they are helping support us so we can get you all these good videos. Hey guys, this week's video is brought to you by Groove Life. They've got this belt. It's the belt that you never have to adjust. It's got the world's most badass buckle, snap shoes and magnets. It is the most comfortable belt known to man. It's got a 94 year, no BS warranty. And then they've got their ring. It's the only breathable ring on the market. It's got grooves in the ring that let air in and moisture out. So comfortable to wear, you forget that you're even wearing it. It's got the same lifetime warranty as the belt. You lose it, you break it, they'll replace it. Groove Life, we appreciate you guys supporting us. All right, medical gear for emergencies. Everybody's like, well, I've got my IFAC, I have my individual first aid kit. I've, I've, I'm good to go. I, I keep it on the back of my gun belt, you know, like all the pew pew guys do. I got to have my tourniquet. Yeah. I got that. Now let's talk real, real medical gear. All right. um, whether you're planning for that emergency, that's you know the the kid falling off the trampoline in the backyard, or whether you're planning for that that car wreck, whether you're planning on that accident while you're out camping with your family, whether it's right after that hurricane coming through, whether it's uh, post-apocalyptic, it doesn't matter. An emergency is an emergency. And no matter what caused it or how extreme it is, if it's one of your family members, one of your friends or personal family, it is the 100% your focus right there, right, right on the spot. Uh, before you worry about medical gear, oh, I got to have the latest and greatest. Guys, the laws of physics have not changed. Okay, medical gear from 50 years ago. Yes, yeah, some techniques and procedures are done a little different now. I got that. But the reality is... Uh, the laws of physics still remain the same. Keep the red blood cells inside the body. Keep the lungs so that they're exchanging oxygen, right? So doing this, your first step, guys, please, please get good medical training first. First and foremost, here's the deal. You can have $2,000 worth of medical gear up in the attic of your house, and when that 70-year-old Korean War vet crashes his Cessna, into the food court after he has a heart attack behind the stick, uh, none of that medical gear in your attic at home is helping you, right? What's gonna help you is your medical training. Do you know what makes a tourniquet correct? And if so, then you know how to do it expediently. Why would I take off my belt when I'm standing out in front of Dillard's and there's a rack of $100 silk scarves right there, right? Does that make sense, right? So medical training first. Now, but when it comes to medical gear, layer your medical gear, all right? Uh, EDC first aid kits. Uh, we even, Tactical Rifleman's, we've even got our own EDC first aid kit. Uh, this is the advanced one. It's got quick clock gauze in it, uh, two hyphen chest seals. It's got everything that you need. And we designed this thing so you can put it in the kid's backpack. You can put it in your carry-on plane. It's TSA approved. Literally, you can have these things anywhere. It's vacuum sealed, it's airtight. It's not gonna get tore up. Um, my whole reasoning for doing that was I started inspecting the actual military IFAC kits like under the seats in my Jeep. You realize my Jeep goes underwater from time to time. And a lot of my medical gear literally was just rotted and muddy. And just I'm like, you know, I really want, really would not want to treat somebody with it. So it changed how I look at my medical gear since I've gotten out of the military. Uh, same thing with tourniquets. Uh, in the military, there's basically only two approved uh, tourniquets to use, and that's the soft T wide and the cat tourniquet. So you know we sell uh, the Cat 7 tourniquets, uh, North American Rescue. It's what I run on my gun belt. I love the cat tourniquet. All right. Uh, we used to not push the Rapids tourniquet or what was previously called the Rats tourniquet because you just couldn't get it tight enough on yourself to, for doing self-aid. In the middle of a gunfight, you've got everything going on. Um, well, now being a civilian, a fag, a former action guy, who am I surrounded with now? I'm not being surrounded with barrel-trusted freedom fighters that are in body armor, full kit and everything. 
So I've re-looked at the Rapids tourniquet. I have no affiliation with them. I don't make a dime off of them. But I'm, I'm here to tell you my EDC, besides me carrying my pistol, I also carry a Rapids tourniquet. Literally, you just, I slide it through my belt. And guys, that's, uh, if I'm wearing shorts, I can run it that length. If I'm wearing long slacks going to church, I can just literally have it hang down the pant leg. And uh, why did I change my mind on the Rapids? Has, has anything changed? No, it hasn't. Yes, you can get a cat tourniquet tighter than a uh, Rapids. You can get a soft T wide tighter than you can a Rapids. However, I can't put a cat or a soft T wide around a child, a small child. I can't put it around the limb of my dog. Uh, me out running around on our property here, my dogs are with me all the time. Uh, kids are with me all the time. I have a, uh, a 14 month old niece now. If something was to happen, uh, me pulling out a Cat 7 tourniquet off my gun belt is not going to help my niece at all. So I now carry something that will work well for just about everybody. All right. So um, next step above tourniquets, or again, keep the red blood cells in the body. Now you start getting into the actual medical kits, what we call an IFAC, individual first aid kit. Every type of pouch under the sun. Um, ATS Tactical Gear, you know I love them. Use TR10, Tac R10, I think saves you 10%. Uh, they make great pouches. You grab the thing, it'll pull right off your belt. And you can lay out whatever medical gear you want in front of you. Sexy, I got that. And they come every shape, color. Okay, now the one I run basically sits horizontal. Again, ATS tactical gear. Guys, it's actually right here on the back of my gun belt. And undo that Fastex buckle and literally you tear it off your back. I keep it in the small of my back. Why? Because the, the real estate on the front of my gun belt is more important. I have that tourniquet where I can reach it right here, same one of my body armors right above it, so I can reach it with each hand. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, put your hand on your wallet, all right? Now put your other hand on your wallet. You see how it's hard to get to it with that other hand. That tourniquet, if your one arm's injured, you need to be able to reach that tourniquet with either hand. So likewise, my medical kit, while small, it rides right in the small of my back. I can reach it with either hand velcroed off and now I can bring it up to where I can see what I'm doing so I like that kind of design kit but again these are just ATS pouches they're pouches what this allows me to do is I can pack it any way I want if I want to put quick clock gauze if I want to put um, different kinds of chest seals this that and the other I can customize my medical gear to me to my level of training that works for me because I used to be a special forces medic. I've delivered five babies. I don't know how many hundreds of gunshot wounds I've dealt with, right? But for the rest of us, uh, I'll push you guys in the direction of buying first aid kits, IFACs that have already been put together. Now, you can get the actual military US Army, uh, Army issue IFAC, and they change it from year to year, but for the most part, it is a set, um, Kind of a set it has to have these verbatim items it's got cards to tell you what to do i don't need a card to tell me the acronym march or march e or whatever it is that you're using your acronym i need more room for other stuff so i've kind of gotten away from using the army ones i don't really push you towards military specific ones what i will push you towards though is uh, there's another company out there called refuge medical and um, they're badass, right? Their, their symbol's the bear. Uh, their head guy, he goes by the name's Bear, Bear Independent. Bear is awesome. Uh, he teaches a lot of medical classes. If you've not seen him on Instagram and all the rest of the social media, uh, he really is awesome. Here's the deal. All this stuff is made in America. Uh, it greatly exceeds military specifications. So when you get his small, medium, or large uh, IFAC kits, individual first aid kits. Brother, you've got basically all the bases covered without even thinking about it. Uh, this one right here, this is the bear, right? Um, the bear fac. 
right? A kind of a good one. He's got a couple different size ones. Uh, he sent them to me. You know where they are? They're actually underneath the seats in my Jeep. So the, my favorite one is actually in the in the Jeep. So right here is called the Bear Fact. Again, it, it everything pulls out of it just like that other one. And guys, literally, it has got tons of everything in here. Everything you need to treat the algorithm March E. Right? Everybody knows massive breed, breed massive bleeding, airway, respirations, uh, circulation, uh, literally everything. You can rattle your way all the way down it. All right. Uh, they don't half-ass it. Now, the tourniquet is inside here. Now, that's not meant to be your primary tourniquet. Remember, I'm big on you having that tourniquet outside. And I actually asked them about that, and they're like, yeah, we agree with you. Have a tourniquet when you, when you can reach it. But this one is a spare tourniquet. Some, and the reality is sometimes you need one more tourniquet. Uh, awesome stuff. This is great for the battlefield. If you're that unit getting ready to go overseas, this is what I'd push you towards. All right, so that's for that medical guy going overseas, right? This is what he needs. This, this is exactly, what about you at home, All right? This is good enough for the military. Would this not also work for in your vehicle, which I mentioned, this, it's brothers, what I keep inside my vehicle. Keeping in your home somewhere that's in arm's reach so all the kids know, hey, go get daddy's medical kit. It's right there. Churches, schools, uh, unlimited places. And you, you can get the kits in all the different colors. It doesn't have to be camouflage. It doesn't have to be multi-cam black. You get something that'll match and you're good to go. Um, before I get into the next one though, and I got a bunch, I got, a, I got some good gear here for you. I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break, all right? Um, our Google mediator, he can go up and get some Hot Pockets from mom. YouTube can ha let you guys watch a quick commercial. I'll see you guys back here in a minute. All right guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial as much as I did. Love that stuff, I really do. Hey, another kit that the Bear Independence got that's pretty awesome is this is called their Bear Minimal. Uh, literally, it's designed to be small of the back, like on your gun belt. And uh, it's, it's a decent kit. It's very, very similar to mine. Uh, it's actually a little more low profile than mine does. It still covers a lot of the same acronym that we use for treating stuff. It's basically designed to be a stop the bleed kit. Um, but it's, it's decent, it's decent. Again, customized kit, I don't care which IFAC you go with, but that IFAC should be that first thing that everybody reaches for. Uh, you know, the people in your family know where to go for the fire extinguisher. They know where your family keeps it. Likewise, they need to know where that trauma kit is also. Now I mentioned trauma, right? Everybody thinks this is it. This is, this is our family's trauma kit. And the reality is guys is, Nada, this is point of injury stuff. It really covers okay for one patient, but it's designed to be as small as possible because the reality is if it's too big, you're not gonna bring it with you, right? But uh, what about if you're going larger? You, sometimes you need more medical gear, and that's when you start getting into what we call our trauma bags. Now, uh, you should have a trauma bag at your home. You should have a trauma bag at work. If you're going on a, lo a long road trip, I take one of my trauma bags with me, and whether it's uh, my family's going camping, wh whatever it is, if we're gonna be going even kayaking, like when we do Operation Valkyrie, uh, you see the mud and the water stains on this thing, the kit's in it, a lot of it is waterproof, but this puppy has been underwater a lot, right? So trauma kits come all different sizes and everything. Uh, I had a bag and I still have it to this day. I keep it up in the attic and that is my old, my old stomp bag, my old trauma bag back when I was an active duty medic. I replaced expendables in it and I even had to replace the stethoscope because the, the rubber tubing had dry rotted in it. That's literally how old this thing is. How many trauma patients have I had to treat here? None, thank goodness. I'm around people that get injured all the time treat them with uh, the IFAX and then off we go to the hospitals. But what about when you don't have access to that next echelon of care? Whether you're out on that long hunting trip, whether your ice storm in your house, your neighborhood is just completely socked in, whether you're in that, um, that hurricane region and the whole city's been shut down, that next echelon of care is just not there. 
Uh, I encourage everybody to invest in a decent trauma bag. So I thought about that and my trauma bags, what, this uh, medium sized one, my big one up in the attic, it was all customized to me the way I was taught to use things as a 18 Delta, as a SF medic. I went through that SF medic course literally right after Desert Storm. So medical gear has improved and everything thinks do things different. But I know how to pack my bag for me. What about for you out there? Again, um, conversation with Bear at, um, at Refuge Medical. He's like, well, dude, we got the stomp bag. I'm like, yeah, stomp bag. That's, that's on the medevac birds. And he's like, no, we, we, no joke, we sell a stomp bag. I'm like, no shit, man. Well, let me check it out. Enter the Bear Independent stomp bag. Now, Big bag, right? Three day, um, I think it's Condor makes the three day pack. This thing of all the medical kits I've ever seen, of all the medical bags, of all the EMT bags and paramedic bags and this medical kit and North American Rescue and H&H &H and everybody that makes medical kit, everybody sells medical kits, right? This thing right here is the 95% solution for me. Now, the reason why I say that is everybody has got different levels of medical training, right? Understanding, but understand also if somebody in your family has, uh, was a nurse or somebody in your family was a doctor, they were a dentist, whatever, you have other medical skilled people that could possibly come into your home. Wouldn't it be nice to have stuff for them, right? Now the stomp bag is designed to treat basically a squad size element. What is squad size element? Again, depends uh, what military you're in. You're looking seven to nine people. Basically, guys, that's your family, right? Family size. Uh, again, it's designed for uh, trained medical personnel. It's designed to handle multiple trauma patients, lacerations, broken bones, uh, patient assessment. I mean, it's literally, it comes with an electronic pulse oximeter, it comes with a stethoscope, it comes with a blood pressure cuff, it comes with everything for uh, doing administration of fluids. It's all top quality gear, um, different brands, North American Rescue, H&H, &H, Meddyne. Um, it's not cheap, right? but it's good, it's real good. And I mentioned it's a 95% solution. Uh, there are some changes I made to it to me to make it personal for me. Um, up top, I keep what's called a Kendrick traction device. Basically, uh, basically the Kendrick traction device, it breaks down like tent poles. Uh, and what it's made for is it's made for doing uh, splinting, a br spl splinting a broken leg, but also for providing traction on a broken femur. So like uh, your people out there, your ski patrol, this is something that they would carry with them for sure. I carry it, why? Worst case scenario. But also when I'm out at the range or I'm out somewhere, there's a hundred tan medical bags or a hundred tan gun bags, a hundred tan camping bags, a hundred tan book bags out there. Mine's the only one that's got the orange pouch on the top of it. So I, I do that uh, for doing that. One, uh, one of the other things I add is a, a full-blown full blown ambu bag for... Um, in case you got to do rescue breathing, does it have uh, does it have a mask on the inside? Why, yes, it does. It does come with a. Come on, let go, puppy. Let go. There we go. All right, so I can do rescue breathing on somebody without without having to do mouth to mouth. To me, that's kind of important. Why? Because I really don't want to suck face with a bunch of jundies, right? So this is what I have added to my kit. A couple of other items, not bad. Easy stuff you get in the back uh, right there. It's stop the bleed fast kits, right? Um, quick clot, all kinds of great stuff. More tourniquets right there outside over here. Again, more tourniquets, it even comes with a sharps container, literally, uh, who gives that thought to this stuff? Because I surely wouldn't. If I did it, I surely would not give that much thought to it. I just, I was taught to just stick sharps into the ground, all right? Um, but that's the kind of detail they get into it. This one over here, 
has got your SAM splints, all kinds of other, uh, other good to have stuff, more chest seals. Again, this bag is set up for multiple trauma patients. You start getting into the meat of the bag, run my zipper around here. And literally guys, I, I mentioned it's got the uh, face shield. You get right up top here and you're getting into all your good Israeli dressings. There's a BP cuff. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna bust all this stuff out uh, to, to say Randy's favorite line on the planet. But I'm not gonna get into this. Basically, I'm, I will lay it open for you. This bag is designed for someone that has medical training to be able to take that trauma patient and literally lay, lay this open and you can work through, you know exactly where everything is in your kit. Whether it's the minor surgical wounds kit, literally for doing suturing, all that stuff, guys, it's all right here. Again, it's, it's not cheap. Um, I added some more suturing material, added a few more sets of hemostats. I'm, I'm not big on doing certain things. I, I like the ligate bleeders, um, personal preference. But again, it changes per your level of medical training. Um, now, besides just this kit, there's all kinds of other medical gear uh, that you're gonna wanna consider having, whether it's litters, uh, Polish litters. I'm not big on uh, pole-less litters because I can make one out of a poncho and two sticks but good collapsible talon litters. Uh, you'll notice I have a backboard here. Uh, it, it's got the spider straps already on it. Backboards are good. If you suspect there's a spinal injury, put them on a backboard right away. Um, am I expecting that? No, I'm not. But when I'm pushing clients hard, for example, Operation Valkyrie, it's my responsibility to make sure that I can take care of everybody until I can get them to that higher echelon of care. Dental training, all right? Uh, there's all kinds of simple things that you can keep in your household. Uh, for example, IRM is a temporary filling material. You can mix it up. You get in there with a little pen light and you can actually replace fillings. And you, you'll find uh, it can really alleviate a lot of the pain right there. You want to get real deep, you can go all the way down the rabbit hole with the preppers and you can get into doing uh, lab sets. And uh, But again, it's the rabbit hole gets deep. Now I mentioned suturing. Do you need to learn how to suture? Do you really need to learn? Now, and here's, here's why I say that, because you go to a lot of these uh, survivalist expos and they have the little quick classes where people learn how to sew on and tie the surgeons knot on pig's feet. The reality is unless you've got broad spectrum antibiotics and IV fluids to start them on those antibiotics, uh, it's best to just do a delayed primary closure. Leave it open, uh, debride it very, very well, clean it very, very well, let it heal from the inside out. Again, this is all stuff you'll be getting from good high quality medical classes. But if you've, got, um, if you've got the basics covered, start looking at what would I do if not necessarily the next echelon of care is not available at all, but is it just delayed? That ice storm, that hurricane, that tornado came through, whatever it is, you may have to sit on a patient for a while. And if it's a family member, a neighbor, uh, one of your brothers in, in arms, you, you, need to be ready to, you need to be ready to take care of them. So when you start looking at, well, okay, I have, my, I have my gear, now I need to start getting those supplies. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up here real quick, guys. When you start doing supplies, drugs, okay, fluids, uh, look at your expendable items, all right? But then start looking durable, hard items. Durable, certain things wear out. Hard items, they don't, all right? But bottom line, guys, get good medical gear. Uh, buy once, cry once. Get medical training. I can't stress enough. Get medical training. Layer your gear. What do you keep on your body? What do you keep on your gun belt? What do you keep in your vehicle? What do you keep at home? Right? If you're interested in any of this uh, refuge medical stuff, um, you go to refugemedical.com. I hit them up for a code for you guys. TR10 uh, saves you 10%. And we mentioned medical training. If you want medical training, refugetraining.com. Hit them up, guys. Find a local Stop the Bleed class near you, and uh, the life you save 
might not be you, but the life you save may be one of your family members. That's all we got this week. Uh, Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.